I'm Lauren. I'm Katie. And we're the creators of Get Messy. Get Messy is an art journey membership community with a focus on creating and connecting with other artists. It's both for beginners and experienced art journalists. This is our monthly interview series, Messy Conversations, where we talk to some of our favorite art journalers and have them share their talents, secrets, and inspiration with us. Through these conversations, we hope that you'll learn more about art journaling and are encouraged to find your own style by seeing all the differences in the artists that we interview. We especially hope that you are inspired to make something. If you would like to become a part of our community, go to GetMessyArtJournal.com or check us out on Instagram at GetMessyArtJournal. So let's chat. Hello and welcome to another Get Messy Conversation. I'm Kaylee. And I'm Lauren. And we are from Get Messy Art Journal, and we're so excited today to bring you Tori, and Tori lives in a really cool named place in Canada, Um, and she's a really talented artist, and she has a shop, and she has children and family, and we're excited to get to know her. Hi, Tori. Hi. (laughs) Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, Sure. (laughs) So, Kaylee's right, I live in Canada born and raised um I live in a town called Kaylee which is ironic (laughs) and yeah (laughs) and uh I'm a parent of two small girls my daughters are like three and a half and two um our town is very rural so I live in a town of like 300 people super small um I started art journaling about a year ago in the second round of get messy starting up and I've been art journaling ever since so so you started art journaling when you found Get Messy? Yes. Like, I had done it in years previously, like, like years ago, sort of self-directed on my own. And I only did it for about six months and didn't produce a whole lot and then sort of moved on to something else. But then I started with Get Messy, and that was sort of my first, like, or my real, like, uh, approach into it. So, What was it that made it really stick for you this time? having the community is what made it stick like having a group of people you're doing it together because when I was doing it on my own there was no sense of like is anyone seeing this am I sharing it with anyone like what's the point of me doing it (laughs) if I'm just doing it for myself and then um I had done get messy and I was sort of in and out and then um I think Kaylee was had posted about doing it every Thursday like the get messy Thursdays and I finally was like okay I mean, like, I, I need the commitment to share every week or else I won't do it. And I think I've shared nearly every Thursday in the last year because of it. That's awesome. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, well, can you show us some of your pages? Oh, <laughs> sure. I can do that. <laughs> um, so I've never actually finished an art journal. Like, I have a pile of half-finished ones and mm-hmm. stuff, but... So this is the one uh, I originally started in. Is this it is a beautiful color? Wow! I can't oh, yeah, it was a, it was a gift bag that I bought that I was gonna put a present in for my sister, and then I decided I liked it so much that I kept it, uh-huh. <laughs> and then wrapped my journal. <laughs> and the cover was really ugly. It's something I'd done like five years ago, and it looked like junk, and so I didn't like it. So yeah, so this is like you can see. I don't know if you can see it. It's only like half full. Mm-hmm. So, but. Yeah, so I can show, actually this one has my old, old pages in it. My really terrible, awful old <laughs> So, okay, let's see if we can. So, like, this was, like, what I was doing, like, six years ago, seven years ago. Oh. Like, really, I didn't like it. It was, like, I was trying to emulate someone's style that wasn't mine. Yeah, yeah. And then I kind of just gave up on it, <laughs> basically. So, and then, yeah, I guess other stuff's all current so like these are some of my very first ones I did second time around like this time around and stuff so yeah so okay so show us like a most recent page so we can see the full okay. evolution all right so those are the, the ones that I just did oh they're not in this journal actually my most recent ones are in my other journal <laughs> So these are ones that I did recently, would be like this one. Oh, yeah. And this is another journal I have, it's a black page journal. And uh, that is sort of, 
like the difference is I think my older stuff, I was trying to do a lot more like collage based stuff and I've moved a lot more to be, like painting, mm. paint based pages. I do like way more painting in my stuff than I did like five years ago. So like other things like that. Mm. So I quite like layering, but my oldest, like that really old stuff was sort of, I didn't really have a direction with it, you know, like I was just slapping paper on the page basically. <laughs> I wasn't trying to find any kind of style or like cohesion to it. And I feel like I've matured enough now that when I try to make a page, I'm trying to like find like a cohesive image of it. You know, you're picking like a color palette to yeah, use with the whole thing. You're not just like throwing whatever on there and hope for the best. So, so would you say that, um, what would you say like got you from point A to point B where you were happy with what you were creating and all that? Do you think it was just like making a like metric ton of pages or was it direction? What was it? I think like in the beginning, I quite liked all the prompts that I used to get, like because you get the prompts every week, right? Or, and I quite liked having that direction of like using a technique I'd never used before. And, you know, I've never like most of my pages aren't very like journaling heavy. Like I don't do a ton of the journaling side of it, the writing. I do a lot more of the creating art and stuff like that. But I think it's probably just pushing myself to commit to making something every week, like to always be making something is what pushed me to sort of find my style because if you're constantly creating then it's just a matter of time for something to develop out of it you know you start to find out what you like what you don't like when you're happy with a page you try to emulate it the next time and that kind of it all evolves pretty quickly into sort of a style that you like I think yeah yeah because you've got a pretty strong style now yeah and that was the biggest thing is my old stuff used to be pretty like ambiguous I guess and even now I still feel like I don't have like a style that I can really like like tap down into like a certain label like I'm like oh I really like collaging or like my style is really like minimalist like I feel like it's super all over the place but it's still I guess distinctive enough to identify as like my style yeah so. well that's what like Lauren and I were saying is that you've got such a distinct style and we could easily pick up like where yours is from the crowd but um mm-hmm. You can't, like, there isn't a label for it. And that's, I think that's pretty cool. Like, that is the Tory style. It's like Picasso and stuff like that. They don't look like minimalist or like Renaissance. Renaissance. (laughs) Whatever, that word. Okay. But they look like themselves, which is pretty, like, and I think that's the same with you. So that's a pretty cool thing as an artist is that you are a real artist and that, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the goal of every artist is to have their own yeah. thing. It's just them. Yeah. Yes. Totally. And I think it takes a while to develop it. Like it doesn't just show up overnight. I think that's the hardest part when you're starting out doing stuff is thinking like you're just going to like spontaneously be original <laughs> and like you're not going to look like anybody else's stuff. Right. You know, it takes not forever, but it takes a while of sort of copying what you like and mm-hmm. sort of reinventing it for a way that you like it. You know, a lot of this, my pages are, um, inspired by other people in the art journaling group. You know, I look at other people's stuff and think, oh, I really like that. You know, I want to try and encapsulate that in my page. And so, you know, you're not going to copy it directly, but you're just going to like, okay, so someone use like tissue paper for layering. And I think that looks really good. So I'm going to try and do something similar in my page. Mm-hmm. And while it's like copying them, it never looks like theirs. Like it's not going to ever come out exactly the same. It's just sort of inspired by it, right? So. Yeah. That's definitely my favorite part of the community. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah, because it's like little building blocks. You take like one thing from one person and one thing from another person totally. and put it together and it's something totally new. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. And how often I look at my pages and I'm like, oh, I caught, like, I was like inspired by, you know, this person and I was like trying to emulate that person <laughs> or whatever, you know, and totally it comes out of some like new original thing. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. I love that. Um, so tell us how you balance having kids and a family and a job and all those kind of things and, and having time to make. Um, I don't. <laughs> I don't balance it. Uh, no, I, well, I mean, we're recording this at the crack of dawn because no. uh, I get up really early. <laughs> no, actually the game changer was is that I started getting up really early. Like I was getting up, my kids got up and then, um, not that it was bad, but it was just, I realized that I wasn't being as productive in the evenings after my kids are in bed, like I thought I wanted to be. And so I get up at 5 a.m. every day and have a couple of hours to do stuff before my kids get up. And that's usually my sort of like magic hours that I 
get all my ideas, you know, and I have time to think and drink coffee and work on anything. And uh, my kids still nap, thankfully, too. And so <laughs> I take advantage of the couple hours in the afternoon that they're asleep. And I will weep the day that they don't nap anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my only time to really get a whole lot of stuff done. So, And my husband's good. He actually has his own hobby. He is quite into cars. And so he's rebuilding an engine right now. And so he's pretty gracious because he has a hobby that's quite time intensive. And so he's pretty respectful of the fact that I have a hobby that I love and I enjoy and a passion and that, you know, I need time for it. He's not, you know, feeling resentful. So he's pretty supportive of that, you know? So, but it's hard. It's a balance. I mean, like I'm making art, but then, you know, like my floors haven't been washed in like a month. <laughs> or, you know, I haven't been laundry in two weeks. But I'm like, I should probably take care of my family and my home <laughs> instead of painting. Yeah. So, it all works out, you know, there's seasons and there's sometimes where I'm not like super inspired and so I end up doing a lot of the like menial tasks of cleaning and taking care of stuff and I find that if I actually focus on that for a bit that I actually end up coming up with a lot more ideas and feeling kind of recharged and refreshed and so every, I don't know, like every couple of weeks I'll sort of like put a halt to everything I'm doing like art-wise and sort of just focus on other stuff and that seems to be a good cycle, I guess. Okay. Yeah. So. I like that. Um, and I like that it's not so much pressure of, you know, I have to be making or doing something and, you know, kind of letting yourself off the hook for that is, is really helpful. Yeah, I think so. I think it's all about trying to find a way to stay sane. Like, I don't think anyone will ever really balance it perfectly. It's always, something will always take precedent over something else, right? It's just a matter of what's taking precedent right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, won't last forever, right? So, um, so tell us more about how your art journaling influences the other projects and things you do. I, uh, I actually get my best ideas when I'm art journaling for other stuff. So I opened up Box and Hazel, my print shop, um, in October, and. My, I sort of accrued pieces, and I've done that, and then I launched a new collection this January, and my new collection was 100% totally related to an art journal page that I did back in, like, November, I guess. Yeah. And so I actually find that a lot of my really good ideas come from art journaling because you're sort of allowed to just play. Like, you're not expected to produce something to a certain point. You're just, you're just messing around. And in the last year, I've found that, I've gotten a lot better at being okay with making a crap page. Like, <laughs> you know, at the very beginning, I really wanted to have nice pages all the time, and I wanted them to look good, and, you know, I was sort of afraid to take risks, and I find that now I'm sort of like, well, if it's a bad page, it's a bad page. Like, you know, it's just wasted paper, and yeah. I'll only get better from it, right? So yeah. an art journal is a really great way to sort of express that, that you get to sort of mess around, try out new ideas, and, you know, see where it goes. And so I find that... Um, that freedom in my art journal really sparks my creativity and my ability to do other work creatively in a positive way. Hmm. So, but yeah, my last collection I just released is like way different than all my other stuff because all my previous stuff was all like watercolors and this one's an acrylic collection and it's like, I here, I can show you the page that I did it from. Like I, <laughs> I have the page that I originally made and then it was like, so here, so this was the original page that I made. Hmm. And then entire like eight piece collect all um, it, it sort of all kind of goes together. They're kind of hard to separate the two from each other. So Yeah. 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 And we'll have links to all of those pieces in the show notes so you guys can see those. Yeah. Um Okay, so whenever we talk to people, uh, I feel like this always comes up because Get Messy is so big and multifaceted and so everyone a lot of our creative team and, and Tori's on our creative team, if we didn't say that. Um they all are in charge of something different, some different kind of project or something we do. And so Tori heads up one of our really cool programs, um, and they make magazines to raise money for really good causes. So tell us all about that. Yeah, it actually, we started just like, well, it's been less than six months since we started it, but um, it started after, I think it was Kaylee put a call out to the group just asking to submit just art journal pages for just like a collective group thing that we could print as a book so we could have like a coffee table book essentially of everybody's work. And that spurred into 
someone suggesting, well, why don't we do one and do one for charity? You know, like you, people sell calendars for charity, they sell whatever for charity, so why don't we do some kind of iteration of that? And so um, when we first started, it was really at the height of when the refugee crisis was sort of all over the news and that was happening and it was like in everybody's mind. And so we did our first one, um, and I think we released it in November, it was um, one to support the UN, oh my gosh, UNHCR. So it's the United Nations uh, refugee fund essentially and so we did that and it was really cool we just put it to the group like the group as a whole saying hey if you want to contribute contribute and so between me and um, another get messy and Vanessa um, we coordinate she does more of the admin and kind of like wrangling people and I was doing the collaborate like building the magazine we produced it and I think by the end of the day our expectations were pretty low because we didn't really, <laughs> you know, we didn't really know what people were going to buy or whatever but we ended up raising in just two months we raised like $700 and we sold, I think it was like 65 copies or something like that. So it was pretty cool. You know, it was kind of fun. I think everyone enjoyed it and knew it was for a good cause. And the one we're currently working on, we're still in the stages of like compiling it, is for the World Wildlife Fund is the new one we'll be doing. So, and our plans are to, it'll be up for sale in March is the, the plan and hopefully it will go ahead. <laughs> so, because we do it all in our free time, so it's sort of hard to put a hard deadline on yeah. anything when you're trying to do it around other projects, but it's been really cool. Like there's lots of girls or women, I should say, in the Get Messy group that are that are pretty keen on this kind of thing. You know, it's a great way we think to to do charity work, um, but using your skill set that you have in a way that can impact others. You know, it's not the same as maybe like going to a soup kitchen or whatever, but you know, for a worldwide group, we feel this is the best way that we can make a positive impact. Yeah. So yeah I love that um, and can you talk a little bit more about uh, infusing depth and meaning into your pages so I know that's a huge thing that you're doing with the magazines but what about you personally um, I actually if I'm trying to maybe have something that's a bit more meaningful and not just like a fluff page um, I usually it's usually stemmed of like a lot of reading so it's you know, like the refugee pages, like that was one that was really close to my heart. It's probably, me and Vanessa, I think that's probably what spurred that to be the first project, was that we were both very affected by the situation and the stories we were hearing and, you know, the images we were seeing. And so I think, I think when you have something that weighs heavily on your heart, it just naturally comes out on your page. You don't really have to force it, you know, and like the things I wrote on my pages weren't like really cohesive thoughts, but they were very like distinct thoughts, you know, like it was more of a an expression of my heart and how I felt about it versus other pages I'd done where I was just sort of trying to make it look nice and wasn't really like digging deep with it. So it's hard to say like I know that other people really sort of marinate in like in the situation or in the thoughts they have and then try to find a way to express it and everyone's different in how they choose to express that. Mm -hmm. But I think that if you have something that's weighing on your heart it just naturally wants to come out on the page like it's almost unavoidable to some degree. Yeah. Um, so if you have any tips for new people who are getting started with art journaling, what would you tell them? To start. <laughs> yeah, no, I would say honestly, like, you know, if you're doing it on your own, then to just go for it. If you have joined Get Messy, then to get involved with Get Messy. I think that is the biggest driving point that you know, I art journaled on my own and I wasn't super motivated by it. But once I saw like this huge group of people who, despite the numbers, are incredibly personal and you make amazing connections with decide, just despite being in the hundreds, you know, that really is what will push you, I think, to to want to contribute and to be part of the conversation and to be part of the group. You know, it's sort of that sounds bad, but it's almost like the peer pressure. Like, <laughs> like everybody's doing it and I want to be a part of it, right? And so you know, we've seen this year people who have been signed up for the last year who were sort of in the shadows sort of coming forth. And I think that's, you know, they've all said the same thing. Like, I don't really want to hang out and watch anymore. I want to be part of the action. And so I think for newbies, the biggest thing is to just, like, put yourself out there and just do it. And even if you don't share it with anyone, nobody's going to know that you made an awful looking page except for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to publish it. You could burn it afterwards if you really want to. But you'll never get any better and you'll never find your voice if you never ever art, like, or do it. Like, if you never make any art, you will never find your voice at all. You'll just sit there wishing and waiting. 
So the only way to do it or to get good at it or to get started is to just do it, just to put paint to paper and make it happen, basically. So. Yeah. 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 Tori, you were saying that um, people should get involved in the community. What, mm-hmm. like, practical way would you say is the best way to get started with that? Well, there's the Facebook group. That's the biggest one, I think, is that getting in there. And then I think, honestly, it's the – even if you don't do it forever, it's the – getting on sharing on a regular basis you know like i think that's the biggest thing is that in the get messy group everyone is like so incredibly supportive of each other and encouraging and it's so good like you know in all the time we've seen things posted i've never seen someone post a page and then someone was like that's terrible like you know like when the last time that happened like never you know even if you think your page is absolute junk someone will love it and someone will be there to lift you up and encourage you yeah. So I think a proactive way to do it is to be involved in the Facebook group, like just chatting and, you know, talking to people and to to can share, whether it's like you're part of the Get Messy Habit or if you're just, you know, doing it once a month or every two weeks, whatever, just make sure you're sharing with the group mm-hmm. in some capacity. And I think that's a good way to get engaged, you know, because people will encourage you and then people will have questions, you know, lots of times you might be something that nobody has thought of or someone's like, hey, how did you do that? Or, you know, where did you get that image from or whatever? And, it's a great way to start a conversation and get interacting with people. So. No, I totally agree. I feel like I can post something at any time of the day, day or night yeah. with just like a ridiculous question. And within minutes, like multiple people yeah. will have like given me a ton of great ideas or answers or, or help or, or whatever. It's, it's so nice. It's so true. I love the, I love the, like sometimes it's frustrating everyone being in different time zones, but yeah. at the same time, it's so, you're right. It's so great. Like any time of day, there is somebody around who can give you some advice or answer a question for you or give you feedback or even just, you know, we have the WhatsApp group that we all text in. And I think that's, you know, it's not usually art related, but it's sort of nice because you bonded and made these friendships that, you know, if you're up at three in the morning, my time with a problem, someone's awake somewhere, <laughs> they'll yeah. probably answer you, right? So it's great. I think it's kind of awesome to have that kind of uh, access to people like 24 seven, essentially. Yeah. So. yeah. That is totally true. Well, thank you so much for talking to us, Tori. Um, and we'll have lots of links to you so people can see your work and see your shop and and all of that good stuff in the show notes. Um, And if you have any questions, just let Tori know, and I know that she'll be more than happy to answer and help you out with anything you need. And so thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you next time for another Messy Conversation. Bye.